Hey, welcome. I'm here with some awesome yogis. We are going to go through a headstand flow today. Headstand is the king of all poses, or that's what they say. It'll stimu stimulate your crown chakra, also help stimulate your pituitary gland, which regulates all the other glands in your body. So it's a really great pose. It can be really fun, helps for battling depression, just a little perspective changer in general, but it's one that people do a lot wrong. You guys probably see it in class. Um, Linda's going to help me demonstrate some things that a lot of people do incorrectly and how to show you how to line it up correctly, but we'll all do this little hand thing first. So the big one is finding when you're doing a headstand to be on the very top of your head. You want to protect your neck and keep it really long. Your neck is an extension of your spine. So if you find that you're tucking your chin or lifting your chin, that's dangerous for your neck. So we'll all take our hands toward the tops of our ears and then your ring finger toward the top of your head and kind of where they meet in the back is where you want your headstand to be. It's a little different for, every, for everyone. Some people will say it's flat up there. Mine's not really flat. Is y'all flat? No. But a little space where it's probably further back than you think. If you're wearing a high pony, where your high ponytail would be. Cool. Um, people who have eye injuries, you don't want to do this. Anytime your head is below your heart, any kind of inversion is going to bring a lot of blood toward your eyes, so avoid it. If you're pregnant and you haven't been doing headstands, you want to avoid this too so you don't fall and hurt your baby. If you have a comfortable practice, you can feel free to continue. Any neck injuries or anyone who's got really weak shoulders or weak core and can't control will probably want to avoid this too. High blood pressure, any others that I'm missing? No? Cool. So everyone else has the green light to do headstand. Linda's going to first show us a supported headstand with her forearms down. I keep wanting to call it forearm stand. Yeah, so she found that little spot. She's going to remember where it is. Tuck her chin in and then slowly lift onto her toes like a down dog. The easiest way to get in is to take knees to chest and then lift your legs to the sky. She's got a ton of control because she's super strong at this. So we can see from the side, the ideal alignment is that everything's stacked up. So her ear, her shoulder, her hip, her knee, her ankle. Yeah, pretty good. Her core is nice and strong. There's a natural curve in her low back, but not a big arch. So she's puffing up her chest. Beautiful. And then you can slowly release it down. Knees in if that feels good. She's strong enough to take legs down. We'll show you guys how to do that. And then we'll show you what a lot of people tend to do. So turn so that your butt is facing Kelly. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> So for a tripod one, and this could happen in any of them, you really want your hands far enough in front. Anytime they're too far to the side, unless you're in one of the funky variations we're going to play with, you're not going to have as much support. So she's going to create a triangle head down, and then she'll get up however she wants to get up. And then we'll have her demonstrate the wrong way, not for too long. So a lot of people dump, yes, yeah, shoulders. See how that creates an arch in her upper back? And you can actually see her shoulders move to her ears. And then we'll have her lift, find again that strength. Her lats are pulling her shoulders down away from her ears or up when she's upside down. That's the way you want to do it. Nice. Cool. Sounds good? All right, let's try it. All right, so we're going to start laying on our bellies for this practice. You can stack your forearms or you can bring your hands to your side and turn your head to one side. Close your eyes. And just begin by noticing how you feel. Try and send your breath into your back. Expand through your shoulders. Expand through your low back. Really stretch everything out. Begin to create a strong ujjayi breath in and out of your nose that you can hear in the back of your throat. And if your head's turned to one side, gently turn it in the opposite direction. Continue to breathe. So more important than anything else in our yoga practice always is our breath. Especially when you're going upside down, people have a tendency to hold on. So find that strong breath now and see if you can keep your strong breath this entire practice. Bring your chin or your forehead to your mat. Take your hands out wide off your mat at the height of your shoulders. You can tent your palms so just your fingertips are down. And as you inhale, peel your chest off your back or off your mat. Relax your shoulders down your back, little cobra, and exhale, lower back down. Let's do three more. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Two. And one more. 
Inhale, lift, hold it at the top, and see if you can lift your belly button off your mat if it's still touching. Yeah, find that core engagement. Relax your shoulders even more down your ears. Beautiful, release it all the way down. Press to child's pose, hands and knees. Forehead relaxes to your mat. Rock a little side to side on your forehead. Massage your third eye. Inhale to tabletop, hands and knees. And exhale, draw your knees together so they touch. It's a lot of core in headstands, right, for that control. You're gonna take your right leg straight back behind you like you're stamping into a wall. Float your left arm straight out in front. Take a breath in here as you exhale, elbow to knee, round through your back, draw it in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Two more, breathe in, breathe out. Last one. Extend your arm and your leg, inhale. Exhale, release just your hand to the ground. Tuck your left toes under, send your right leg to the sky, down dog splits. Open up your hip, bend your knee, find any kind of movement. Notice what the back of your left leg feels like, your hamstrings. We'll build a lot of flexibility in the back of our legs too and that'll help you lift rather than kick into a headstand. Extend your leg long. Exhale, take a big step forward between your hands. Inhale, stay low, look forward. Exhale, step your left foot up to meet your right at the top of your mat. Halfway lift, reach your chest forward, breathe in. Fold, exhale, release it all down. Rise to standing, reach your arms to the sky. Exhale, cactus, find your shoulders out of your ears again, pull them down your back, open up. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, navel to spine, nice and slow. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, step your right foot back first, then your left, find a high plank upper push up and hold there. Spread into your fingertips, press into your fingertips. And maybe rock a little gently forward and back on your toes, back toward your heels. Feel your core engage, your arms getting strong, your shoulders getting stronger. Next inhale, shift forward. Exhale, chaturanga, elbows in. Up dog, slide your heart forward. Downward facing dog, hips to the sky. Take a breath in through your nose. Let it out through your mouth. <sighs> Feel free to move around here. Down dog is a great prep pose for a headstand because you're already in somewhat of an inversion. Your head is below your heart. You're also building some of that arm and shoulder strength, some opening. And if you're doing it correctly and thinking of moving your shoulders out of your ears again, building some of that lat strength. Gently lower your knees down to your mat tabletop and draw your knees together to touch. Extend your left leg behind you, take your right arm straight out in front, find your balance, inhale. Elbow to knee, exhale, draw it all in. Three more, inhale, extend. Elbow to knee, really round, strong core, two. Last one, breathe in and breathe out. Extend your arm and leg, inhale. Release just your hand, exhale, tuck your right toes under. Inhale, down dog splits, left leg to the sky. Exhale, open up your hip, bend your knee, move around, circle, bend and straighten. Again, notice what your right leg feels like this time, back of your leg. Extend your left leg long, breathe in. Big step forward between your hands, exhale. Inhale, look forward, sink into your hips. Exhale, step your right foot up to meet your left. Halfway lift, breathe in. Fold, release everything down. Rise to standing, arms to the sky, inhale. Cactus as you exhale, bend your elbows, lift your heart. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, forward fold, hinge from your hips. Take a halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale your hands down, plant your palms and find your crow pose. So knees can climb into your triceps. Spread your fingers, even if you barely lift your toes off the ground, start to find that your shoulders, again, are moving out of your ears, down your back. Your belly button is lifted. You're starting to build some more of that arm strength, core strength control. Reconnect to your breath. Beautiful, and you can step or hop it back through your chaturanga. Up dog. Back to downward facing dog. Bring your big toes together so they touch. Take your right leg to the sky, inhale, look forward and try to float your left hand off the ground. So really hug your inner thighs, engage your navel to your spine. 
Notice where you have to adjust, where you can breathe a little bit more. Nice, hand down, leg high. Inhale, knee to nose, exhale. Inhale your leg to the sky. Tap your right elbow or shoulder. Back up, breathe in. Cross it to your left elbow or shoulder. Inhale, leg to the sky. Exhale, step between your hands. Crescent lunge all the way up. And then take a moment to settle in. Find those little adjustments. Left hip forward, right back. Draw your ribs together. If you feel like you're arching a lot in your low back, that's gonna affect what happens when you go upside down. So find those strong positions now. Nice, release your shoulders away from your ears. Pinky fingers can roll in toward each other a little bit more. Find one more breath in. Exhale, open out to warrior two, left heel pivots down. I like to move around in my warrior two, so feel free to bend and straighten in and out of your right leg. Settle into your hips. You guys look great, relax your shoulders. Constantly finding that energetic movement down your back with your shoulder blades. And then bring your hands to your hips, straighten out your right leg, inhale. Exhale, turn your toes to the same edge as your left toes. Take a breath in, puff up your chest. Exhale, hinge forward with a flat back for your prostorita. Hands can release down toward the ground. Can be nice to take a halfway lift here. So again, find some length, shoulders out of your ears. Exhale, fold, release everything down. Still early, so just kind of notice how your legs feel, where you're tight. Yeah, and you may start to reach the top of your head toward your mat. Nice, Kelly's got her hands on her ankles, that's a good stretch. Linda's already setting up her tripod here with her hands down. So just feeling what's happening. Nice, Paige, we're gonna go there too. There's seven types of headstands, hopefully we'll get through most of them, maybe all of them, maybe not. Stay low, turn toward your right foot, bend your right knee, take an inhale, look forward. Exhale to a standing splits, left foot to the sky. Let your head and your neck relax. Notice if your shoulders wanna collapse here when you go upside down, really move them out of your ears. I'm gonna keep saying the same things over and over and over again, so just keep finding those connections. One more breath in. Forward fold, feet together, release it down. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold, exhale, release. Back to standing, arms float to the sky. Cactus, exhale, bend your elbows, open up your chest. Inhale, reach high. This time, exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Come onto your tippy toes, take an inhale. Keep your heels lifted, exhale, lower all the way down toward a squat. You might snap, crackle, and pop here. <laughs> Strong core. Yeah, see if you can take it all the way down, nice. Find that engagement again, stack your shoulders over your hips. Beautiful, and then release your hands down. I think most of us are gonna have to hop back just a little bit. We're gonna play with crow to a tripod headstand. So give yourself some space. You want your fingers spread really wide. And then the goal is to take your head in front of your hands, so definitely not in line. So knees to your triceps, begin to find balance. Your toes barely have to lift. Tuck your chin into your chest. Find that spot in the back top of your head that we found with our fingers, and see if you can just drop that to the ground. Nice, page. Knees can stay on your triceps. Beautiful, Meg, that's it. You can stay right there, or if you feel balanced, lots of core, you're gonna lift your hips to the sky. Squeeze your inner thighs, hug your elbows in and back. Yes, press into your hands and lift your shoulders out of your ears. Nice, feel that difference, Meg? Ribs in, core in. So lots of options. You can try and come back toward crow, knees to your triceps. And then play with lifting your head. Lift, 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 lift. Yes, step or hop it back through vinyasa or straight back to down dog. So good. So that was number one. <laughs> Tripod. We'll call them all shirshasana, but different variations. A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, all the way to seven. Feel free to move around, pedal out. And we'll do the same thing we did on the other side. Big toes together. Left leg to the sky, hug your inner thighs, engage your core and try to float your right hand forward. It helps to look forward. If you feel pretty good with your balance, you can look back, beautiful. Just your hand down, keep your leg high, breathe in. Knee to nose, breathe out. Inhale, leg to the sky. Exhale, tap your left elbow or shoulder. Back up, breathe in. Exhale, cross it to your right elbow or shoulder. Inhale your leg to the sky. Exhale, step between your hands. Find your crescent lunge. 
Strong leg, reach it all the way up. And then again, notice what's happening with your hips, your chest, your shoulders. Where can you engage? Where can you relax? One more breath in. Warrior two, right heel pivots down, open it out. Feel free to bend and straighten in and out of your left leg. Yeah, find that stretch, find what your hips are doing, where your shoulders can move down your spine even more. Straighten out your left leg, inhale, hands to your hips. Exhale, turn your left toes in. Breath in, puff up your chest, really hug your elbows back. Exhale, hinge forward toward Prasarita. Hands can come down to the ground. Again, if it feels nice, take your halfway lift, or if you enjoy just to stay in the stretch, hang out there. And then notice what your legs feel like. So if you're feeling a little bit more open, now you might be able to set up again for a tripod. I like to think of my fingertips in line with my toes, so my head can go way far in front. Different way to get into it, sometimes easier for people because your legs are wide. Again, lifting through your shoulder blades out of your ears, nice page. You can always stay wide. Or you can float your feet up or stay in the stretch. Perfect, Meg. And then see if you can draw your ribs in. Stocking ear, shoulder, hip, knee, ankle. What can we adjust a little bit more? Maybe ribs in even a little bit more. Yes, yes, yes. And then slowly come down the way that you went up. So legs out to the side, you're good. Lots of control. Beautiful, stay low, turn toward your left foot, bend your left knee, take an inhale, look forward. Exhale, standing splits, right foot to the sky. Feel a stretch, the back of your leg. A lot of people wanna kick into a headstand, which is gonna jerk your spine a little bit, but once you have enough flexibility through your hamstrings and your low back, you can kinda of lift with one leg instead of crawling through a little ball. Take one more inhale, forward fold, feet together, exhale, release it down. Halfway lift, breathe in. Fold, let it go. Rise to standing, arms to the sky, inhale. Exhale, palms together in front of your heart. Back onto your tippy toes, inhale, stand tall. Squat as low as you can go, exhale all the way down. Reach your arms in front, this is gonna be a little bit funky, I'm not gonna do it, we're gonna sit back onto our butts and find a boat pose, float your legs. Nice, engage your core. Try and suck your belly button up and underneath your ribs, relax your shoulders. So your option is to stay here. Arms can go to the sky or legs straight. If you want some boat crunches, as you inhale, try and lower toward the ground and hover. Exhale, lift back up. Knees can bend toward your chest or they can go straight. So good, Kelly, take it for two more. Exhale it up, find that core strength. One more. And then up. And then stay here, take a breath in. We're gonna hop back to Chaturanga, cross your ankles, plant your palms, roll yourself forward and hop it back. Nice. Up dog to downward facing dog. Big breath in, exhale out. One more. Give yourself a little child's pose, drop your knees. Palms can either be flat in front of you or if you're feeling you wanna open up your shoulders a little bit more as we start to get into these, bring your palms together, bend your elbows and take your hands to the back of your head. See if you can shimmy your elbows a little bit more forward. Reconnect to your strong, full breath. All right, release your hands down. While we're here, we're gonna set up for Shirshasana. Supported headstand, I should say, since we're calling them all Shirshasanas. So come onto your hands and knees. For this one, you really want your elbows about as wide as your shoulders. A lot of people end up going too wide and then they have no support. So a good test is to take your hands to your elbow creases so you know that they're wide enough, or just kind of peek down, elbows right below shoulders. Hands flat or interlaced is probably gonna be a little bit better. You can always stack your hands. Lynn, if you wanna get crazy, you can do this one. No. <laughs> so we're gonna tuck our chin. Again, think about that top of your head. So you don't wanna be too tucked so that your chin is into your chest and you're rounding through your neck and you don't wanna be too close to your forehead so that your chin is lifted and there's a weird angle. So find that spot on the top of your head if you need to adjust, adjust. And then yeah, just lift your knees. Think of down dog on your head. Beautiful, you can walk your feet in. Knees to your chest is the best way. You guys are pros. And then really press into your forearms. Lift your shoulders out of your ears. Nice, guys. 
That looks awesome. So a beautiful thing about this one is you can always tuck and roll into a somersault if you need to come down. Don't feel like you guys have to, but if you want to, you can. Or the easiest way down is just knees back into your chest. Nice, really find their core engagement, ribs in. Beautiful, when you're ready, lower it down. Find your child's pose again, arms can stretch out in front. Lots of breath into your shoulders and your low back. I was only number two. How many more do we have, five? <laughs> So you can stay wherever you're comfortable. This is a process, right? Not easy to get there right away. Gently lift to hands and knees. Exhale to downward facing dog. Big toes together, right leg to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, step between your hands. Crescent lunge, rise up, arms high. Exhale, open out to warrior two. Inhale, right leg straight, hands to your hips. Exhale, turn your toes in. Puff up your chest, breathe in. Exhale, dive it forward. Release your hands down, take a halfway lift, inhale. And exhale, fold. Yeah, so if you wanna adjust on your mat, your feet can come to one edge so that your head can come closer to the other. Linda's gonna do a version where her hands reach between her legs. She likes palms up, I like palms down. Those are two different ones, so maybe we can demonstrate two at the same time, nice. If you feel balanced like that, and only if, you can just work the stretch. Find your shoulders out of your ears. Find your core strength. Ideally, your hips are stacked above your shoulders so you can lift up. So Meg might stay and begin to work some of that flexibility. Linda's up. Kelly looks pretty ready to go up if she wants to. Do you want a spot? Yeah. Cool, so see, a spot is great. You can totally use a wall. And she's really pressing into her hands and keeping her shoulders out of her ears. Nice. Strong core. She can bring her feet back just a little bit. Beautiful, breathe. As you're ready to come down, if you're up, legs go back out wide. Come back down. Nice, so much control. Walk your hands toward your right foot. Bend your right knee. Take an inhale, look forward. Exhale, standing splits, left leg to the sky. Just one breath in, lengthen. Forward fold, feet together, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold, exhale it down. Rise to standing, arms to the sky. Palms together in front of your heart. Inhale, reach to the sky, stand taller. Exhale, forward fold, hinge from your hips. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, step or hop back, chaturanga all the way to your belly. And then reach your arms in front of you toward the camera to the top of your mat. As you inhale, lift everything off your mat. Try and lift your belly button off your mat. As you exhale, cactus bend your elbows, pull your shoulders down your back. Nice, two more. Inhale, reach, lengthen. Exhale, elbows back, maybe lift a little higher. So good, one more. Reach your arms out. Stretch, lift, and lower down. Press to child's pose, hips to heels. Knees can be together, that's a nice release for your low back. Arms wherever you like them. Paige has got a little embryo variation going on. Gently find your way back to hands and knees, back to downward facing dog. Big toes together, left leg high, breathe in. Step between your hands, exhale. Inhale, crescent lunge, arms up. Exhale, open to warrior two. Inhale, left leg straight, hands to your hips. Exhale, turn your toes in. Puff up your chest, breathe in. Exhale, hinge forward. Hands can release to the ground, lift halfway up, chest forward, shoulders out of your ears. Exhale, fold even a little bit deeper. So same options as before. If you wanna do something a little bit different or funky and you're flexible enough, you might have to spread your feet out wide enough. You're gonna stack your forearms, one in front of the other, and try and bring your forehead just in front of your top forearm so you're on the top of your head again. And then you can slowly start to float your legs out and back up. Different variation, that's it Kelly, yes. Nice Paige. So find your shoulders out of your ears, beautiful Linda, so good. 
Never knew there were so many headstands, right? <laughs> See if you can still breathe here, maybe not laugh. <laughs> I'll try not to be too cheesy anymore. Find that shoulder connection up and away from your ears. Engage your lats, engage your core. So good. And slowly lower yourself back down. Excellent. Come on to your hands. Meg, you feel good? Work in the stretch. Awesome. Turn toward your left foot. Bend your left knee. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, right foot to the sky. One breath in, lift your foot even higher. And exhale, release it down. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. We're gonna come onto our tippy toes, back into the little squat, hands to your heart. So this is option one. Option two, we're gonna play, again with the tripod headstand, but moving from a side crow into tripod headstand. So if you wanna turn sideways, you can. Otherwise, I like to keep my hands forward, turn my knees sideways, make a little shelf. I do it with one elbow to my knee, one elbow to my hip, cheating a little bit. Spread your fingers, and then see if you can find balance. And then from there, it's a lot of butt. Tuck your chin, I'll let Linda demonstrate. Lift your hips and try and come up to your tripod and then see if you can take it to side crow on the other side. So you're working some abs, some obliques, a lot of shoulder strength. Even if you just do the side crow nice, Meg, that's a great way to start. That's it, Kelly, and then a lot of butt. Lift, 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 yes. And then see if you can take it up. And then side crow to the other side. Coming back down is a little bit easier than going up, yeah. <laughs> Try it. And that's where using one elbow might be easier than using two because your butt's not dropped all the way down. But using two yeah. is sort of easier to find the balance. So play with that a couple of times. Nice, Meg. Side crow in each direction. Awesome, Paige. If you can find balance and you want to play, tuck your chin. Find the top of your head again. Really protect your neck. Use your core, maybe even a little bit of momentum. Really press into one hand to lift your hips. That's a super tough one for me, too. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> We'll find our way back to a child's pose, however you want to get there. Those are good little exercises to work on to build more core strength. Release everything down. Reset your breath. Stay here as long as you want. The next one we're going to play with is a couple of options. Either, again, your supported forearm or headstand with your forearms down, and then working some little leg variations through a pike to build core strength rather than coming into a little ball. Or, and maybe Linda will demonstrate this one, doing more of a forearm stand headstand where your forearms are down and your head is down. So she's going to set this one up almost like she's going to set up a forearm stand. Her head comes between her forearms. And the knees into chest is fine. Yep, one leg to, your, to the sky is fine. She's got the strength and the flexibility to be able to stack everything up. It's okay if it's not perfect. And then lift it up. For the rest of us, if you want to try and build some strength, just play with that, Linda. One leg up, then the other. We'll do a regular supported forearm or headstand. Forearms down, hands stacked or interlaced. And then see if you can walk your toes in so your hips are above your shoulders. And with legs straight, lift all the way up. If you can get them all the way up, then to start to build some more core strength, drop halfway into a pike, lift it back up. If that's easy, try the bottom half. So halfway to a pike, tap your toes, and lift it back halfway up. So just playing with building some core and back strength. Whatever version works. Maybe you just come onto your toes, walk them in, and find where you need to build some more strength or some more openness. Nice, yes, 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 yes. So good. The halfway down is tough. That's it, Meg. And then lots of core draw back up. So good. You got it, Paige. If you really want to challenge it, tap your toes to the ground and then lift them up. That one's crazy. Yes. <laughs> nice, Kelly. So they're still working all those muscles, right? Shoulders out of their ears, core strong protecting their neck by being on the very top of their head and using more forearm and shoulder strength, pressing into the ground so they're not dumping all the weight on their head. Super, super important. And you've had enough, it's child's pose, but feel free to keep playing. And then I'm gonna need Linda to help me recap. So we did tripod, we did supported, we did hands out, palms up, we did forearm stacked, 
We did forearms down, so now it's just arms wide. Okay, so one more kind. We hit six out of the seven. So if you want to try the seventh, Linda, do you want to demonstrate this one? Sure. Cool. So for this one, your arms are going to be wide. So she will probably start in a regular tripod. Yep, set everything up, and then you bring your arms out wide right away. It's the easiest. Some people will move from tripod to their arms wide. That's a little bit more challenging. I'm going to move out of the way so you can see her. Again, everything stacked. She cheats it a little bit. Her hips are forward so that she can get some weight over her shoulders. And then when she gets up, she's going to realign, find ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, ear. So from the side, I can pull her back just a bit. Nice. If you're really crazy, maybe there's an eighth one. You end up seeing people like Dharma Mitra just on their head with one arm to their side and then the other arm to their side, but we're not going to go there today. Safety is number one. If you guys want to try it, go for it. Or one of the other ones. The forearms down is nice. The hands back is nice. Awesome, Kelly. That's it, Paige. Keep your shoulders up out of your ears or down your back out of your ears. Nice, Meg. Yeah, so keep your hands slightly even in front of you so you can find them in your peripheral. That's it. And then really press into your fingers. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Awesome. Child's pose is a beautiful little rest. Good job, Paige. Stretch it out, breathe. Hopefully you did something different than you ever have before. Linda, I'm gonna have to come up with an extra challenge for you. <laughs> and then find your way to hands and knees tabletop. So we worked a ton right in our shoulders, our upper back. We're gonna stretch it out. Take a little thread the needle, right arm high. Roll your wrist a couple of times and thread toward your left, drop to your shoulder. Really come onto the shoulder blade as much as you can. Let your face come down. Left hand can stay, stretch forward, or wrap around. Everyone likes something a little bit different. Feel the stretch, open up. And I love practicing outside like this on the grass because, again, you can tuck and roll, and there's less of that fear of falling than on a hard wooden floor or a hard concrete floor, tile floor, wherever you might practice. And then slowly release, switch sides, press down, unwind, right arm out and up. Release it down, take your left arm to the sky, roll your wrist a couple times, thread through, lower down. Nice stretch. Excellent. And release from there. Just come to take a seat on, actually let's unwind. Even it out, left hand down. And then take a seat on your feet. If this isn't comfortable, you can sit on your butt. Reach your hands behind you, interlace your fingers, roll your shoulders back, lift your chin for a moment gently, and then tuck your chin in toward your chest. If it feels okay, some little half circles, chin to one side and then to the other. If there's some place you wanna hold, you can do that. Release your hands, lift your shoulders to your ears, breathe in, exhale, roll them down your back. Two more times. And we'll just take an eagle arms, whichever arm you want underneath, find your shoulders or connect your hands. Little movements can feel good, circles in both directions. You can even come onto your knees, lift, and then round forward. I like to move around there. Probably did a lot or you'll probably feel your rhomboids a lot tomorrow along with your lats, kind of pulling your shoulder blades together and down. So feel a good stretch in there today. Excellent. And when that's enough, just switch. So the other arm comes underneath. Same thing, whatever movements feel good, circles, bend and straighten, rock it forward. And slowly release from there. We'll take it onto our butts, extend your legs out in front of you. Lower onto your back. And a really nice counter stretch since we've been working a lot of our core too for your core is a back bend. That might be a bridge, that might be a full wheel. So set up how you like, bend your knees. Hands by your sides for a bridge or by your ears for a full wheel. Take your time, press up. 
and really breathe into your belly, expand your ribs in all directions, find a stretch. Lower down, tuck your chin, hug your knees into your chest, release your low back. Rock side to side, or yeah, knees to your chest. You can even do, draw your knees circling in the sky. Happy baby twist, whatever else you like before Shavasana. Find all those movements. Headstand is one of those poses you can kind of do on its own. Pop up in the middle of the day when you need a break, maybe not right after you've eaten. <laughs> Maybe if you're not totally cold, but for the most part, if you have a strong enough headstand practice, you could probably even start it right at the beginning of class. If you have high blood pressure or eye injuries, it's something you want to avoid. These guys are all pretty healthy. And then Shavasana, however you like to take it as you're ready to get there. your body get heavy again. stay here much longer obviously if you guys want to stay feel free but as you are ready to come back into your regular routine begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes take any stretches arms over your head and with your eyes closed slowly and carefully find your way back toward a comfortable seated position Take a moment to sit up tall, relax your shoulders out of your ears. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. And gently bow your head. Namaste. Thanks guys. Feel okay? <laughs>